Coming up on Koshi's Business Builders, the steps for building a successful startup, planning for an emergency in your business, and champion Sydney to Hobart skipper Mark Richards explains the secrets of his business success. And welcome to the final episode in this series of Koshi's Business Builders. And as you can see, we are going to go out in style. We've had a great couple of months bringing you some fascinating businesses and some terrific tips from our team of experts. But before you get too sad, the good news is Koshi's Business Builders will be continuing each and every week on our very own YouTube channel. Go to koshisbusinessbuilders.com.au for all of the details. Now, to use you can use, and we hear so much about using social media these days. New research has come out and said that 72% of businesses that use social media say that it has contributed to increased sales. The problem is, only 27% of Australian businesses actually use it. So, my challenge to you this year, make sure social media is an integral part of your online sales strategy. Now, everyone has a new idea. Everyone has a great idea. Everyone has an idea that they think will make them a fortune. The problem is the path to success can be incredibly difficult. But if you follow the right process, you can succeed. Here's how to do it. Chris Rathke is one of the founders of GetStore. He's come up with an app that allows you to sell your one-off, unwanted belongings via social media. The company launched just six weeks ago and they're in desperate need of some advice. I sent in startup guru Mick Lubinskas to show him the way. You're like many startups in that you're taking something people are already doing and making it better. But one of the things everyone faces is to get them to move to a new product, you've got to be significantly better, not just a little bit better, I always say, look for 10 times value add to start with. Who are those customers? What's the segment that are crying out for this product? Who really, really needs it the most? We were thinking um, like stay-at-home mums, um, single mums that typically are, are exchanging a lot of like baby used, baby goods. Um, we found they're sort of giving that stuff away to each other anyway. So we went back to the drawing board and we actually have found that um, boutique vintage type shops and market stalls have, have actually shown the most interest. So I advise all the stars we talk to, what can you do to increase your speed of learning? Once you start that learning with customers, you can actually then validate that a product solves that problem. Once the product solves the problem, you can make the product into an efficient business. That's the next phase. Once you're efficient, then you can start scaling. Then you can start getting bigger and bigger and you've got an engine of growth and that's when things get really, really exciting. And what we try to push a lot of startups on here at Polonizer is to get focus at every step. So focus on a small set of customers, one type of use case, one type of business model, uh, and one type of product. Uh, but also really specifically one type of location. And we encourage startups to work in your local area so you can have conversations with people. Is that how you're starting? Yeah, um, so we're based in Brisbane at the moment. So that's what we've done. We're actually um, in West End, just outside of the, um, the city. And so we've actually been approaching shops in our local area. They're, the, they're our, sort of our first few testers we're getting um, items posted with. That's really interesting. So many startups make this big assumption that a solution's going to be valuable. They don't actually think about the customer who has the problem. And you, your ability to get in front of real customers early with the idea and the concept has helped you leapfrog a couple of steps. That's really critical. What's keeping you up at night? What's scaring you? Pitching. Pitching is a tough one. Like, two developers and a designer, like, I talk a lot, but pitching is going to be scary. Pitching is something you don't just do a couple times a year to some big investors. It's something you do every day. Don't worry about pitching on the last night if you've pitched 100 times before. So just keep pitching every single day. Tell the story, and then it won't feel like a pitch. It'll just feel like telling a story. Uh, you know, I'd say three months incubation type period. You know, what, what's a reasonable amount of of traction to actually have? It's a great question. Uh, how much traction do you really need to show for an investor to commit to you? The reality is there's no d defined answer. Um, 
some rules of thumb I like to think about is how much traction would you have to see yourself to mortgage a mother's house? One really important thing about traction is you, they don't want breadth, they want depth. So it's much better to say amongst the antique stores in Surrey Hills, 40% of the stores are all using Getstall and they love it and they're using it every day. So you're looking for depth, real traction, not just drop by once, not try it at once, but actual paid money, used it 10 times. It can be a small number, but if you've got depth around a small number, it's gonna be infinitely more powerful. Don't skip any steps, that's really critical. Go one step at a time, discovery, validation, efficiency, scale, and you've got a successful business. So the big question is not how to develop your idea or product, but whether there are people there to buy it and people who wanna buy it. The key is testing. So make sure before you spend too many dollars that there is a market and customer base for it. Now, plenty more tips on how to start up a business on our website. Go there now. Coming up, how to stress test your business against unexpected shocks. Subscribe now to the Koshy's Business Builders app delivered to your mobile device on a fortnightly basis. You'll get the very latest advice from the KBB team of experts and also exclusive interviews with Australia's most successful entrepreneurs. Download now by searching for Koshy's Business Builders on the App Store. The business environment is so unpredictable these days and businesses need to act quickly to avoid failure with things that come out of the blue that affect your revenue and your cash flow and your relationships. The problem is most business owners are optimists and they don't even think of planning for failure. They only plan for success. So I caught up with our finance expert, Julia Bickerstaff, to run us through ways to stress test our business to make sure we've got a plan in case the unexpected comes along. Now, Julia, it's all very well to have the best laid plans of a business over the next 12 months, but the big fear is if something goes wrong. How can you plan for that? How can you stress test your business? Well, here are some thoughts. The first one is you should be doing a cash flow forecast anyway so that you know what your cash spend is each week. But you, you really need to do that um, for emergencies because you're, the thing that's going to kill your business is running out of cash, not running out of profit. So you need to know what your cash spend is each week. Now, the first thing that you will then do is look at what could you take out of the business if you needed to. If your sales just completely fell, what are the sort of variable costs which you could take out? Now, often, unfortunately, they're people costs, but you can plan for those and you can have a, a, a sort of an emergency plan of, if I needed to, which people could I let go? Now, now one of the beauties is if you're on the ball about a drop in sales, is that you should have a sort of an inflow of cash coming from your debtors um, while your sales are dropping. So you should have a little a sort of amount of cash that you're still collecting. And that cash you could then use, for example, to pay redundancies. Because that's normally the trouble with getting rid of people is you, it, it costs yep. you to do so. The next thing that I would do is have a look at what you can renegotiate and actually have a plan for what you'd renegotiate. So maybe, you know, how would you renegotiate with the ATO and any payments there? And also about going to see your bank. So especially if you've got a loan with some covenants, um, you'd need to go and speak to your bank before you breach them, not afterwards. So renegotiate, and I suppose with your landlord as well. Absolutely. So, so all those things of what you'd actually do. And then you'd, you'll end up with a sort of a, 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 a cash outlay that you can't get rid of, that that's, that's what you've actually got to cover. And that's when you sort of know, well, we have got to be selling this many a week to cover that cash. What do, what do we do? And then it's sort of a plan of, well, well, what would you do if the sales, if your sales fell out? What could you, what would you do if you needed 10 new customers tomorrow? So basically you can do all these things now to make your business more efficient. Absolutely, and the best example of that is, is a business that I know that um, at the beginning of the GFC had an absolute crisis and lost two thirds of its sales. And so they had to do something and, and quickly. And the management team got together and they, they, they worked out a plan and basically it was about uh, focus, focusing on a particular speciality they had. So they got rid of a number of customers and they got rid of a number of products and they came out with a super profitable small business. And the owner said, you know, if I had my time again, I would do 
do that again. It's, it was a better business after he'd had the crisis than it was before. Some great tips there from Julia. The key is don't wait for disaster to strike. You've got to plan ahead. And in the meantime, use those tips to make your business more efficient. After the break, I joined six-time Sydney to Hobart champion skipper Mark Richards to hear his tips for business success. My name is Owen Lester from Cubic Financial Advice. We provide financial planning advice for families and small business. The way business is done these days, people will like to look us up on the net before they actually approach us, and that's the way I do things too. With uh, KBB Web in a Box, we've found it, it to be relatively inexpensive and it's been easy to follow, and there are plenty of options there to build the sort of website that we were looking for. The thing that really grabbed me was the KBB content editor, which means that I can go in 24 hours a day, seven days a week and make changes if I want to, uh, at no cost. For a business like ours, which is constantly changing, that's very important. To start your free trial today, go to kbbinabox.com.au. This competition is brought to you by Yellow Pages. Could your business really benefit from some advice? Thanks to Yellow Pages, you could win a one-hour business session with me in your closest capital city. All you need to do is tell us in 25 words or less how your business could benefit from a one-on-one -on -one chat. To enter, go to the Koshy's Business Builders website and click on the Yellow Pages competition to submit your details and your answer. Our next guest knows better than most about how to stay afloat, and not just on the high seas in a Sydney to Hobart race either. He's been able to navigate the tough business environment brought on by the global financial crisis with very much a niche business aimed at the high end of the market. Palm Beach Motor Yachts has thrived in this environment, so let's find out how Mark Richards has done it. Mark Richards started sailing rubber dinghies at the age of six and building boats at 16. Not only is he at the helm of the famous Wild Oats with six Sydney to Hobart wins, but he also runs a very successful business building custom-made luxury motor yachts. I caught up with him to see how he sailed through these tough economic times. It's a high-risk game. This pleasure boat building game, we've seen a lot of the big names in Australia go broke. Yeah. Was it deliberate for you to get to the top end of the market, to, to leave the competition behind the, the shark pool, if you like? Yeah, look, you can't compete with the shark pool. It's as simple as that, you know. In the smaller boat market, and there's so you know, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of different styles of small boats you know, on the marketplace. and. Uh, built in all different countries, you know, that you just can't compete with it, you know, on price or, or, or whatever. And, and when you're dealing with a lower price level, it is a shark pit, you know. Um, the top end, people want quality and uh, you've got to pay for quality. It's as simple as that, you know, we're over. So the premium end of the market, do you manufacture here? We manufacture everything here. Um, we virtually build everything in-house. So it's uh, something that will never change as far as, you know, I own Palm Beach motor yachts and, um, it's something we're really proud of. Everyone says manufacturing in Australia is dying. You can't compete. You've got to manufacture overseas. You're not. Why? Why would you want to go and you know, live in China or anywhere else you know, and, and manufacture your product if you can do it here? You know, we're becoming very efficient. Um, we've got a fantastic team of, of people working for me and uh, that's half the key to the whole you know, success of, of, of being able to survive here in Australia. And, um, you know, we're constantly developing our efficiencies and you know, bits and pieces to, to stay competitive at this end of the market. Give me an example of that. And there's no question, you know, our, our man hours are much more expensive here than overseas, much, much more expensive. So you've got to get those man hours down. And we're constantly you know, um, creating and developing construction techniques to reduce the man hours, but to maintain the quality, and, and it's working for us. How much time do you spend in the business? You're off around the world doing your sailing. We see you winning Sydney to Hobart and breaking records. How much do you spend in 
in Palm Beach motor yachts? Look, 90% of my time. Yeah, it, it, it's huge. Really? I mean, yeah, we don't do a lot of sailing overseas anymore, you know, and it, all my overseas travel now is all related to American travelling, you know, promoting the Palm Beach motor yacht product in America. And, um, you yeah, know, I'm very fortunate that i am you know, got a great association with Bob Oatley and the Wild Oats team, and uh, we have a lot of fun. And you've still got to have fun in your life, you know, it's really yep. important. But I'm just l very lucky that my fun and my business are both in the same industry, and it, and it really works well, and they piggyback off each, off each other. So. so Wild Oats is sort of like your hobby. Yeah. This is your love, this is your business. This is... And Mark my, Richards. And it's my hobby. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love it. Yeah. But, it, yeah, no, it is. And, look, yeah, as I said, we've, we, we, you know, I started myself 18 years ago with one, one young kid with me, you know, and it's, um, and it's come to what it is today. Um, you know, I, I wake up and I can't wait to get to work, you know. I wake up at 2 in the clock in the morning and still write down ideas on my pad, notepad next to the yeah. bed and they're all the things that, you know, I love doing and, um, and hopefully can keep going for a long time. So how many people in the business? Uh, 65, yeah. Wow, that's a big business. What percentage... Are the tradesmen, how much has that been? I'd say 96% are on the tools, 4% are off the tools. You know, the foundation is very strong and uh, that's been the key to survival in these tough times is being not being too top heavy and um, keeping the admin to a minimum. So that's something you've been really conscious of? Absolutely, you know, and I've got some fantastic, you know, fantastic mentors out there and... Uh, you know, I've seen many people, you know, mess it up and get way too top heavy and, you know, it, it happens, you know, they just can't support themselves and uh, we're the opposite of that and we work very hard at, uh, at staying that way. What, you sign the checks, you look at every invoice? We sign every invoice, sign every check, check everything. It's, it's very, very important. What have you done to take on the American market? How have you attacked that, if you like? Look, we've only been there for three years and it's not easy. You know, it takes a long time to uh, establish a brand in America. They're very, very wary of you know, overseas um, manufacturers. Very fond of Australia, which is which is which you know, works in our advantage. And um, you just got to be there. You've got to you know, present your product well. You've got to have good support, good backup. Surround yourself with the right people and you'll have the success. And, and you know, we, we seem to be having that success. It's been a great privilege for us to talk to you. Good on Thanks, Mark. Good Thank to see you, mate. Good on you. You know, I've got to say, Mark Richards was one of the most fascinating business people that we've had on this series of Koshy's Business Builders. There's so much more to that interview that we couldn't put on the show, so go to the website and it's all there. Koshy'sBusinessBuilders.com.au Coming up next, it's time for Ask Koshy, where we answer your burning business questions. This business tip brought to you by NAB. We see Australian business. Regardless of your business stage, understanding your cash flow is critical to the success of your business. That's why NAB has created an online cash flow improvement tool. By entering six key financial measures into the tool, you can uncover opportunities to help improve the running of your business and see the significant impact that even a 1% change can make. The six key financial measures you need to get started are details of your business's revenue, cost of goods, overheads, debtors, inventory, and creditors. The tool is simple to use. It's designed to help you better understand your numbers so you can have an informed discussion about your financial performance. Visit nav.com.au forward slash small business and see how even small changes can make a big difference to the running of your business. Thanks to our friends at Microsoft Office 365, Business Builders has a series of three live, absolutely free webinars coming up over the next couple of weeks. I'll be quizzing a panel of experts on making sure your business is at the cutting edge of technology and productivity tools. And I'll be putting your questions to them. So get your questions ready and register now for the first live webinar, Wednesday, 27th of February, midday. It's Tech Tip Time with Val Quinn. Antivirus software is probably the last thing you want to think about when running your business, but it's extremely important and can't be overlooked. For example, your customer's data is private and needs to be protected, as well as your mission-critical information. And viruses these days aren't confined to just PCs. They can infect smartphones, tablets, and all kinds of mobile devices. So really, it's time to think about a holistic approach to protecting your computers and business systems. 
So internet security suites offer far more than just antivirus protection. They include a range of other things, such as anti-phishing technology, or backing up your data to make sure that it's protected in case of a disaster. On top of that, your data can be protected from prying eyes in case your laptop or smartphone falls into the wrong hands. And the good thing is, with these holistic suites, you can manage a lot of the different services across different devices from a centralized console, making it easy to use. Now, there's a range of internet security products to meet your business security needs. So hop online and you'll find out lots more about it. Now to answer some of your questions, and Alistair writes in saying, I've got a great business idea that I'm sure will blossom, but I'm scared of taking the next step and discussing it for fear of losing my idea. What could I do to protect it? Alistair, it's a really common fear for people who have startup business ideas. First thing is, and whenever you talk to anybody about your idea, ask them to sign a non-disclosure agreement. Now, this is standard business practice, but ensures that they don't go and blab to anyone else. Also, register your idea with IP Australia. It's pretty simple. Go to their website and see if you can register as a trademark or some sort of other protection. And then demonstrate your idea. Draw some pictures of it if it's a product to show that you really do have a conclusive idea that is actually yours. So a couple of simple steps to do it. Well, that's all we have time for, not only for this episode, but for this series. It's been great having you aboard. Don't forget, though, that Koshi's business builders and the information and the tips and the good ideas keep rolling along on a daily basis through the KBB website and also through KBB TV on our YouTube channel. You can get all the information seven days a week, 24 hours a day. We look forward to your company then.